There are five problems with this function to make it easily tested. The first is that it doesn't validate its parameters very well. It just assumes that this zip is there and attempts to do basic validation on it. But if the zip's not there, it completely blows up, throws an exception, which is caught down here. And the general reasoning as to why the zip is wrong is basically to say it's wrong format. It doesn't really tell you why, which is not helpful at all, both to you, both to your fellow developers and any consumers of your API. The second has to do with the Mongo client. It doesn't reuse the database connection. It actually creates creates it in line and just assumes that it's already connected. It's relying on the promise to always return the same value, which is great, except you don't need to do this in an API call. The database connection is mired in with the actual error handling of it if it fails, with the actual search of data and whether the data worked or not. This is kind of all tangled together here and it's very difficult to test those things. Fourth thing is that all these responses, take integration testing out of it. If I throw in a data search with a zip, I get this error for this type of bad zip versus I have a connection error. So you kind of have to know where you are in this code to know what type of response you're getting rather than getting a very consistent response from an API. Each one of the errors and successes is completely different. And the last problem is that we can't even test this class more than once because once we import this module, it's gonna create a server. So if we close our unit test and try to start it again, this port's already in use and we'll have a server in the background which is just very, very annoying. Let's fix this first before we do anything. We're going to say if require.main equals module, then we can go ahead and run our server. That means that somebody wrote node index, in our case, npm start. Otherwise, if you require this file, it won't launch a server. Now let's fix the response error first to be consistent. So any error anywhere for any API should return the exact same thing. A result of false, the API kit call didn't work with an error indicating what went wrong. So we'll say get error response with an error, it's optional, but it should be encouraged to know what that went wrong. We can return a result of false always, and the error optionally, if you don't pass anything, it won't actually put that in the object. Go ahead and start some exporting some functions so we can test them, module exports. In our unit tests, we will import it. So we'll go const error response from our module. We'll do a root describe of index, do a basic test to verify that our code compilation and unit test setup works. This may seem silly and trivial, but nine times out of 10, this is the first thing to break when you can't even get a basic unit test to work. Whenever anybody breaks your build system, this is one of the most silliest things to prove that nothing works. So we'll say true should be true. If that doesn't work, you know that your build system or your library or node version or something is wrong. Run npm test just to verify we're on good ground here, which we are. We'll then describe our new function that we imported in here, get error response. And there's only like two tests we have to do with, it, with that for now. First is just to verify that it returns a result of false. So if we call it, it should always report false. An error response means that something didn't work. Get error response result should be false. We run our test. Two passing, wonderful. It should return an error if we give it one. Go ahead and create a fixture here of boom. We'll feed it that fixture. And the error that it sends back should equal boom. So we know it got an error. It's going to pass that to the client using RESTify's JSON parser. Our test pass. Great. Let's go ahead and implement that. So here, a string is fine. You don't have to pass an error back. Whatever JavaScript data type you use, it'll parse to JSON. That's all that matters. Same with this guy. Same with the search error. And lastly, same with an unknown error that happens in an imperative style. Cool, so our errors are all gonna be consistent. Let's fix the successes as well while we're here. We'll go test out our API. So a get success response is always true. And if you have any data to send back, go ahead and pass it in, which is optional. So we're going to say results is true always and data if anything. So this is our success maybe. 
go ahead and export this guy out. And describe our successful response to verify that what we're sending back to the client is legit. It should be true. Specifically the result. So even with no nothing passed in, the result should be true. So from any API, regardless of if it gets no data, we can report to the client or whoever's calling it that it should be true. We run our test. Good to go. Should return data if we give it some. So let's go ahead and create a data fixture. Const person. Say first name is gesture excel that's moi pass in person data should equal person so whatever we gave it should be set on the object and ready to go back to the client good all our unit tests pass let's go ahead and replace the successes now so error 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 the success is no longer results we're gonna have a consistent thing of data we're not gonna make up things back so get success response of docs which has our array of search results. And the last one is ping. So instead of sending this back, it's gonna send pong. Wonderful, so let's go test our API out real quick. We'll go npm test to make sure that we didn't break anything while we're refactoring, we didn't. Now we're gonna do npm start to run our module. Our server's now running. We're gonna go to localhost ping, returns our maybe a result of true and our data of pong. In our data with a zip of New York, still returns our data. We return no zip. It gives our maybe in a lot better format now. We know the call didn't work and here's why. And if we don't return a zip, we still get that function validation warning, but at least we've caught it now in the try catch with the result of false. And here's, we don't understand why. Here's what could be possibly wrong. Good luck in trying to figure that out. Our API works. We've got successful responses now. We've got an API. We always know how it's going to respond. And we've extracted that. We haven't made too much progress on the coverage though. So if we say npm run coverage, although we have an API that we know it to expect and we call it, we still need to do some work on the functions internally. So let me just go ahead and show you the coverage here. npm run show coverage. Go into the database testing. All right, so we've got the top. These guys are tested nice. We still need to extract some of these pieces to test them in isolation, but at least the responses are now in a good place. So we'll continue on validation testing tomorrow.